Hello children, today we will talk about sets in sets, relations and functions topic. So the obvious first question is what are sets? A set is a well-defined collection of objects. Here the keyword is well-defined. So let us understand what is well-defined, what is not well-defined with the help of these examples. So the first example is all the students in a class. Suppose there are 30 students in a class. So there are 30 members in that particular set. So it is well defined. Second example is all the natural numbers less than 6. So they will be 5 in numbers starting with 1. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So in that set there will be 5 members or 5 elements. So these two statements are well defined. They form a set. And these two examples let us see example 3 all the bright students in a class. So bright is a relative term. Somebody will say this student is bright. Somebody will say no, 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 not this student. That student is bright. So it is relative term. It is not well defined. Fourth example, the collection of good batsmen in a cricket team. So again, good is not well defined term. It's a relative term. Somebody will say someone is good. Somebody will say no, 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 he is good. So it is not well defined term. So this statement will not form a set. Now representation of sets. How to represent sets? So normally sets are represented by capital letters. Means capital A, capital B, C, capital C, etc. And these are called elements of the set. Elements are interchangeably used with the words elements, objects or members. So in this set, the set name is capital A. In this set, there are four members, A, B, C and D. And they are separated by comma and enclosed within curly braces. So that is how you represent the set and its members. Usually objects in a set are distinct. Even if objects are repeated, set remains the same. So what does it mean? Suppose this is set A having four elements A, B, C and D. I write another set, let's say B having elements A, A, B, C, C and D. So we take the distinct elements in this set as A, B, C and D. So set remains the same, means A is equal to B. There are some reserved letters to represent specific sets. You should avoid using those letters by defining a set. Capital N represents a set of natural numbers. Capital Z represents a set of integers. Whereas Z plus and Z minus represent a set of positive integers and a set of negative integers respectively. Capital Q represents a set of rational numbers. Q plus and Q minus represent a set of positive rational number and a set of negative rational numbers respectively. Similarly, capital R represents a set of real numbers. R plus, R minus represent a set of positive real numbers and a set of negative real numbers respectively. Capital C represents a set of complex numbers. Suppose there is a set A which has five elements A, B, C, D and E. So we can say that a belongs to A, B belongs to A, C belongs to A, D belongs to A and E belongs to A. And it is represented by the symbol Epsilon. So B Epsilon A, we will read it as B belongs to A. Similarly, we know that F is not the element of set A. So we can say F Epsilon and then cross A means F does not belong to A. There are two methods to represent a set. They are roster or tabular form and set builder form. We will see roster form first. In this method, all the elements of a set are listed. For example, a set of whole numbers less than 5. So, let's say set is A. It has the 5 elements 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, we have to list all those elements in this roster form. Second example, a set of odd natural numbers. 
So let us represent the set B having numbers 1, 3, 5, dot dot dot. Dot 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 shows that the set continues indefinitely. Similarly, in example 3, a set of integers. Let us set this C. So we can represent as dot 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 comma let's say minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2 and again dot dot dot. Means the elements in this direction continue indefinitely and in this direction as well. Remember the order of elements in a set is not important. Suppose this is our set. So you can write elements in any order. It will not change. So you can write 4, 2, 0, 1 and 3. So set will remain the same. Second method is set builder form. Let us understand what is this. All the elements in the set possess a single common property which is not possessed by any element outside the set. Let us understand this with the help of this example. Suppose I have a set S which possesses 5 elements A, E, I, O, U. You know that these are vowels in English alphabet. So I can write it as S equal to under curly braces X colon X. X is the element of the set. So, what is the speciality of this element? X is a vowel in English alphabet. So, this curly braces is read as the set of all and colon is read as such that. So, let us read this now. S is a set of all, set of all X such that X is a vowel in English alphabet. So, except these letters no other letter in English alphabet is vowel. So, that is how we represent in set builder form. Second example, B is a set consisting of numbers 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You know that these numbers are natural numbers between 3 and 10, not including 3 and 10. So, in set builder form, we can write it as set B is equal to under curly braces, we can write X colon where X is element and what is the speciality of this element? Of every element in fact, X is a natural number and X lies between 3 and 10, boundaries are not included. Or B is equal to X colon X belongs to capital N which is natural number set and X lies between 3 and 10 where 3 and 10 are not included. Types of sets. First one is empty set. This is also called as null set or wide set and denoted by phi or a pair of curly braces. As the name suggests, empty set is empty means it contains no element in it. For example, A is a set of all X such that X is a student studying in class 11 and class 12. Obviously, a student cannot study in two classes simultaneously. So, A will be empty set. It will be denoted by A is equal to phi or A is equal to empty. Second example, B is a set of all Y such that Y is an even prime number greater than 2. As you know, there is only one prime number which is even and that is 2. So, there cannot be any prime number which is greater than 2 and even. So, this is empty set and it will be denoted by phi B is equal to phi or B is equal to a pair of curly braces. Second is finite and infinite sets. As the name suggests, finite set means it will have finite number of elements, means they can be counted. And infinite sets will have infinite, means uncountable number of members. For example, finite sets, suppose D is a set consisting of all the days of a week, means in 
roster form we can write as d is equal to monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday and sunday and in set builder form we can write as d is a set of all x such that x is a day of the week example of infinite set a set of all natural numbers we can write as p is equal to under a pair of curly braces 1 2 3 4 dot 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 means it will keep on going till infinite so there are infinite numbers of this set third example a set of all integers let the set be i so i is equal to dot 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 then minus 1 0 1 then again dot 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 means integers in this direction as well as integers in this direction so it will have infinite number of elements in it third one is equal and unequal sets two sets a and b are said to be equal sets when all the elements of a are also in b and all the elements of b are also in a suppose a and b are two sets a is having elements a b c d and b is having elements c a d p you can clearly see that all the elements of a are also in b and all the elements of b are also in a so we can say that a is equal to b if that is not the case we will say that a is not equal to b second example m is the set of all prime numbers less than 6 and n is the set of all prime factors of 30 so let us form the sets m will be m will be equal to all prime numbers less than 6 will be 2 3 and 5 and n will be equal to all prime factors of 30 all the factors of 30 will be 1 2 3 5 6 10 15 and 30 among them 2 3 and 5 are prime factors so n will be 2 3 and 5 as elements in it so you can clearly see that all the elements of m are also in n and all the elements of n are also in m so we can say that m is equal to n next one is equivalent sets two sets a and b are said to be equivalent sets when they have equal number of elements in them suppose set a is having four elements in it a b c and d and set b is having four elements in it p q r and s so set a and b in this case will be said to be equivalent sets as they have equal number of elements in them that is four fifth one is disjoint sets two sets a and b are said to be disjoint sets when they don't have any element in common for example set a is having elements a b and c and set b is having elements 2 5 and 9 clearly they don't have any element in common so set a and b in this case will be disjoint sets sixth one is subsets consider two sets a and b a is having elements a b and c and b is having elements a c b and d you may notice that all the elements of a are in b so a is called subset of b and subset symbol is this what it means is suppose a belongs to this set a it implies that a also belongs to set b if a is subset of b consider two sets c and d c is having elements a b and c and d is having elements b c and a so since c is having all the elements also in d so c is subset of d in the same way d is having all the elements common in c as well so d is also subset of c so it is written here c is subset of d and d is subset of c it is possible 
if and only if when c is equal to d next one is proper subset and superset consider two sets m and n m having elements a b and d and n having elements a b d e and j clearly m is subset of n m is subset of n and m is not equal to n in this specific case m is called proper subset of n and n is called superset of m so you need to remember this condition for the definition of proper subset and superset next one is singleton set a set having only one element is called as singleton set next one is power set the collection of all the subsets of a set is called as its power set consider set a having two elements a and b then its all the subsets will be first one will be 5 then a b and a comma b so power set of a will be written as pa and this will be under curly braces we will write all of them pi a b a comma b so this will be the power set of set a next one is universal set if a set u contains all the sets under consideration as its subsets then the set u is called the universal set for example a set of real numbers r is universal set for a set of integers z now let us see order of a set the order of a set defines the number of elements in a set it describes the size of the set the order of a set is also known as cardinality consider the set a having the elements a b e f and g so they are five in number so we can say order of the set a or its cardinal number is 5 now let us talk about venn diagrams most of the relationships between the sets can be represented by the means of diagrams these diagrams are known as venn diagrams to draw a venn diagram first you need to draw a rectangle then write capital u on top right corner representing universal set to represent sets you need to draw circles so this is the example of one venn diagram as we go along we will see more of it now let us see operations on sets so we will talk about union intersection and difference operations on sets first one is union of sets consider two sets set a and set b so union of a and b will be all the elements of a plus all the elements of b taking common elements only once so in set builder form we can write a union b this is union symbol a union b is equal to set of all x such that x belongs to a or x belongs to b notice or so the element will be either part of a or part of b consider this example where set a is having elements 2 3 5 8 and 10 and set b is having elements 5 3 10 12 and 14 so a union b will be first we will take all the elements of a so 2 3 5 8 10 2 3 5 8 10 10 then we will see which ones are common in both the sets so 3 5 and 10 are common so we will not take them again 12 and 14 are only in b not in a so we will write 12 and 14 so a union b will include all the elements of a as well as b and removing common elements means repetition you need not to show we can show this example by venn diagram so this circle represents set a and this circle represents set b so i have written all the elements of a inside this circle and all the elements of b inside this circle and the common elements are shown in this area so a union b will be this whole area
Second operation is intersection of sets. Consider two sets, set A and set B. So, A intersection B will be common to both the sets, this area, which is part of A as well as B. In set builder form, we will represent A intersection B. This is intersection symbol. So, A intersection B is equal to set of all x such that x belongs to A and x belongs to B. Notice and keyword. Consider this example again where set A is made of elements 2, 3, 5, 8 and 10 and set B is having elements 5, 3, 10, 12 and 14. So, A intersection B will be elements common to both the sets. They are 3, 5 and 10, 3, 5 and 10. So, A intersection B will be a set having elements 3, 5 and 10. The same thing can be represented in Venn diagrams. So, this circle represents set A having elements 2, 3, 5, 8 and 10 and this circle represents set B having elements 3, 5, 10, 12 and 14. So, A intersection B will be this common area having elements 3, 5 and 10. Third operation is difference of sets. Consider two sets, set A and set B. So, A minus B will be represented as the area which is only in A, not in B. So, this represents, this area represents A minus B. So, in set builder form, we will write as A minus B. This is difference symbol. So, A minus B is equal to set of all x such that x belongs to A and x does not belong to B, means part of A but not B. Consider the same example again where set A is having elements 2, 3, 5, 8 and 10 and B is having elements 5, 3, 10, 12 and 14. Then A minus B set will be all the elements which are only in A not in B. So, such elements are 2 and 8, they are only in A but not in B. So, A minus B will be 2 and 8. It can be represented in Venn diagram as well. This circle represents all the elements of A and this circle represents all the elements of B. 3, 5 and 10 are common to both the circles. So, they will be represented here. So, A minus B will be all the elements which are only in A but not in B. So, they will be 2 and 8 as shown in this Venn diagram. Similarly, we can calculate B minus A means all the elements who are in set B only not in A. So, such elements are 12 and 14 which are only in B not in A. So, B minus A will be 12 and 14. So, clearly A minus B is not equal to B minus A. Now, let us understand what is complement of a set. Consider a set A which is subset of universal set U. Then complement of set A will be denoted by A dash which will be equal to U minus A. What does it mean? It means it will be formed by all those elements which are part of U but not A. In set builder form, it can be represented as A dash equal to set of all x such that x belongs to U and x does not belong to A. When you do union or intersection operations on sets, they follow various laws of algebra. Let us see one by one. First one is commutative law. A union B is equal to B union A. Consider in this Venn diagram, there are two sets A and B. So, A union B is this whole region. So, whether you do A union B or B union A, result will remain the same. A intersection B is B intersection A. Consider in this Venn diagram, there are two sets A and B. So, A intersection B is this common region. So, whether you do a intersection B or B intersection A result will be same. So, A intersection B is B intersection A. 
Second one is associative law. Let us see. A union B union C is equal to A union B union C. First you need to do A union B. So consider two sets A and B. So A union B will be this whole region. Then you need to do union with C. So A union B union C will be this whole region. Now you need to do first B union C. So consider B here, C here. So B union C will be this whole region. And when you do union with A, this will be A union B union C. So you see the result is same. So A union B union C is equal to A union B union C. Now we will see this one. A intersection B intersection C is equal to A intersection B intersection C. Consider two sets A and B. So A intersection B we have to do first. This is A intersection B. Then we have to do intersection with C. Suppose this is set C. So this one is a intersection B intersection C. Now on the right hand side B intersection C we have to do first. So consider B here, C here. So B intersection C will be this common part. And now we have to do intersection with A. Consider A here. So when you do intersection with A you will get this as result. You can see result is same in both. So A intersection B intersection C is equal to A intersection B intersection C. Third one is idempotent law. A union A is equal to A. Consider set A. When you do union with itself, result will be same set A. A intersection A is equal to A. Consider set A again. When you do intersection with itself, obviously the common will be set A itself. So A intersection A is equal to A. Fourth one is identity law. A union U is equal to U, where U is universal set. So consider set A. When you do union with universal set, you will get universal set as the result. A union phi is equal to A, means you are doing union of set A and empty set. So result will be A. A intersection U is equal to A. Means what is common in A and U? Obviously set A. So result is A. A intersection phi is equal to phi. So what is common in set A and empty set? Obviously empty set. Fifth one is distributive law. Let us see. A union B intersection C is equal to A union B intersection A union C. Here distribution of union over intersection is taking place. You can prove on your own by Venn diagram. Similarly, A intersection B union C is equal to A intersection B union A intersection C. Here distribution of intersection over union is taking place. Again, you can prove on your own by Venn diagram. Now, let us see laws related to complement of sets. There are three laws. First one is De Morgan's law. First one is A union B dash is equal to A dash intersection B dash. So, here there are two sets A and B. A union B is this shaded region dash of A union B is the region outside of A and B both. So that is equal to we have to prove A dash intersection B dash. In this figure again the same sets A and B are there. So A dash will be outside of A means leave alone A. B dash will be the region outside of B means leave alone B. So common portion of A dash and B dash will be you need to leave alone both A and B. 
so exactly this will be the area outside of a and b so first one is proved similarly second one a intersection b dash is equal to a dash union b dash you can prove on your own the similar way second one is complement law let us see u dash is equal to phi so what is complement of universal set so what is complement of universal set nothing so it is empty what is complement of phi complement of empty complement of empty will be whole means universal set a union a dash is equal to u so what is a union out of a a union out of a will be universal set a intersection a dash is equal to phi so what is common in a and out of a what is common in a and out of a nothing so it is empty third one is involution law let us see complement of a dash is equal to a first we will figure out a dash a dash is outside of a so complement of a dash will be inside of a means set a itself while solving word problems on sets these formulas are frequently used let us see what are they first one is n a union b is equal to n a plus n b it is read as number of elements in set a union b is equal to number of elements in set a plus number of elements in set b the condition is if a and b are disjoint sets consider two sets set a and set b these are disjoint sets as there is no element common in them so total number of elements in set a union b will be number of elements in set a plus number of elements in set b as written here second formula n a union b is equal to n a plus n b minus n a intersection b means number of elements in set a union b is equal to number of elements in set a plus number of elements in set b minus number of elements in set a intersection b this is general formula and this formula is a specific case of this general formula we will see in a while so consider two sets set a and b so number of elements in set a union b the green shaded portion shows a union b so number of elements in a plus number of elements in b this is counted twice so we need to subtract this part once and this part is a intersection b so that's what it is written number of elements in a union b is equal to number of elements in a plus number of elements in b minus common part subtracted once so minus n a intersection b in this formula suppose a and b are disjoint sets means there is no element common in a and b as shown here so a intersection b will be phi or 0 so the formula will change to n a union b is equal to n a plus n b as shown in the first formula third formula involves three sets a b and c so n a union b union c is equal to n a plus n b plus n c minus n a intersection b minus n b intersection c minus n a intersection c plus n a intersection b intersection c let us see how it is derived suppose a union b is r so a union b is equal to r so left hand side will be n r union c we can expand this as n r plus n c minus n r intersection c now put again r is equal to a union b so we can write as n a union b plus n c minus n a union b intersection c where a union b will be done first now this can be expanded as n a plus n b minus n a intersection b plus n c minus n a union b intersection c this will be done first now notice 
this A union B intersection C is shown here. So, A union B is this green shaded portion. When you do intersection with C, this will be red shaded portion. So, we have to get this. In this figure, I have done B intersection C. So, B intersection C is this portion. Then, A intersection C is this portion. So, I have added B intersection C plus A intersection C and I have subtracted this common portion once. Means, N B intersection C plus N A intersection C minus N A intersection B intersection C. So, notice that these two portions are same. So, I can replace this by this. So, it will be N A plus N B minus N A intersection B plus N C minus. Now, this portion will be replaced by this. Since minus is outside, so I will change sign of all the terms here. So, it will be minus N B intersection C minus N A intersection C plus N A intersection B intersection C. Now, you can rearrange the terms and write as N A plus N B plus N C minus N A intersection B minus N B intersection C minus N A intersection C plus N A intersection B intersection C. That is what the right side is. On the left hand side, you can write A union B in place of R. So, N A union B union C is equal to this. So, this is what the third formula is. Now, let us see some practice questions. I have taken these questions from Mathematics for Class 11 by Dr. R.D. Sharma. First question is, in a group of 800 people, 550 can speak Hindi and 450 can speak English. How many can speak both Hindi and English? We can solve this question by two methods, by using formula or by using Venn diagram. So, let us solve by using formula first. Consider two sets H and E that of Hindi speaking people and English speaking people. So, we can write N H union E is equal to N H plus N E minus N H intersection E. So, union is given as 800. So, 800 is equal to NH, number of Hindi speaking people. So, 550. So, we can put 550 plus number of English speaking people 450 plus 450 minus N, people who speak both the languages. So, we can solve this simple equation. N taken to this side will be N is equal to 550 plus 450. That will be 1000 minus 800 to this side will be minus 800. So, n is equal to 200. So, number of people who speak both the languages is 200. Let us solve by Venn diagram. Suppose n is the number of people who speak both the languages. So, we can write number of people who speak only Hindi as 550 minus n. So, 550 minus n will be this portion. Number of people who speak only English will be 450 minus n. So, we will write 450 minus n here. So, this will be this portion. Now, we can add these three areas. So, what we will get? We, we should get the summation 800. So, 800 will be union of both the sets. So, it 800 will be 550 minus n plus n plus 450 minus n. So, n and will get cancelled. Here minus n will be taken to this side, it will be n. 550 plus 450 that is 1000 minus 800. So, n will be 200. Again, you get the same answer. Second question, 
in a group of 50 people 35 speak hindi 25 speak both english and hindi and all the people speak at least one of the two languages how many people speak only english and not hindi how many people speak english again consider two sets h and e that of hindi and english speaking people respectively formula is an h union e is equal to an h plus an e minus an h intersection e total number of people is given as 50 so we will put 50 here that is equal to number of people who speak hindi 35 plus number of people who speak english we have to figure out let's say any minus number of people who speak both the languages 25 so we can solve this simple equation 50 is equal to 35 minus 25 10 plus any so any is equal to 50 minus 10 that is equal to 40 so 40 people speak english second part how many people speak english is answered 40 people first part is how many people speak only english and not hindi so have, we have figured out how many people speak english that is 40 and 25 people speak both the languages means number of people who speak only english not hindi will be 40 minus 25 that is equal to 50 so 15 people speak only english not hindi we can solve this question by venn diagram also so let us see how total is 50 people means union of h and e is 50 and number of people who speak hindi is 35 and 25 people speak both the languages so this common part is 25 so we have figured out 25 people speak both the languages so this portion is 25 number of people who speak only hindi will be 35 minus 25 means 10 10 people will speak only hindi not english and total is 50 so if we subtract 10 plus 25 means 35 from 50 so we will get 50 minus 10 plus 25 that is equal to 50 minus 35 that is equal to 50 so 15 people speak only english not hindi so we have figured out first part how many people speak only english and not hindi 15 people means this this area now the second part is how many people speak english so english speaking people are here so it is 15 plus this common 25 15 plus 25 means 40 people speak english third question in a town of 10000 families it was found that 40 percent families buy newspaper a 20 percent families buy newspaper b and 10 percent families buy newspaper c 5 percent families buy a and b 3 percent buy b and c and 4 percent buy a and c if 2 percent families buy all the three newspapers find the number of families which buy a only b only none of a b c so this question can be solved quickly by venn diagram let us see how first step is to figure out how many families buy all the three newspapers so two percent families buy all the three newspapers two percent of ten thousand will be two hundred so you need to write two hundred in this common zone now how many families buy a and b 5% families buy A and B. 5% of 10,000 will be 500. So, common to A and B will be 500. 200 is already occupied. So, you will write 500 minus 200 that is 300 here. Now, common to B and C. How many families buy B and C? 3%. 3% 3 of 10,000 is 300. So, you will write 
300 minus 200 means 100 here. Common to A and C. How many families? 4% of 10,000. That is 400 families by A and C. A and C. So, 400 minus 200. You need to write 200 here. Now, 40% families buy newspaper A. 40% of 10,000 will be 4,000. So, this summation is 4000 and this summation is 3 plus 2, 5 plus 2, 700. So, 4000 minus 700 will give 4000 minus 700 that is equal to 3300 families by only newspaper A. So, write 3300 here. Now, 20% families buy newspaper B. 20% of 10,000 will be 2,000. Means this whole area will be 2,000. So, 2,000 minus 300 plus 200 plus 100. Means 3 plus 2, 5 plus 1, 600. So, 2,000 minus 600. 2,000 minus 600. That will be equal to 1,400. So, 1,400 families by only newspaper B. Let us figure out how many by only C. So, 10% families by newspaper C. 10% of 10,000 will be 1,000. So, 1,000 will be summation of this whole area. You need to subtract 200 plus 200 plus 100 means 200 plus 200, 400 plus 100, 500. So, 500 need to be subtracted from 1,000. 1000 minus 500 that is equal to 500. So, 500 families buy only newspaper C. So, you write 500. So, let us see what all the parts we have answered. A only. A only is 3300. B only that is 1400. None of A, B and C. To figure out none of A, B and C, we need to do summation of all these and subtract from 10,000. So, we will figure out how many families do not buy any of the newspapers. So, let us do summation of all these first. So, 3300 plus 300 plus 1400 plus 200 plus 100 plus 200 plus 500. Let us see, we have included all. 3300 plus 300 plus 1400 plus 200 plus 100 plus 200 plus 500. Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, we have to do summation of all. It will be 0, 0, 3 plus 3, 6 plus 4, 10 plus 2, 12 plus 1, 13 plus 2, 15 plus 5, 20. 2 carry over. 2 plus 3, 5 plus 1, 6. So, 6,000 families buy some of the newspapers means either one, either A or B or C or combination. Let us figure out how many families do not buy any of them. So, it will be 10,000 minus 6,000 that will be 4,000. So, 4,000 families do not buy any of the newspapers. Fourth question, a school awarded 58 medals for honesty. 20 for punctuality and 25 for obedience. If these medals were backed by a total of 78 students and only 5 students got medals for all the 3 values, find the number of students who received medals for exactly 2 of the 3 values. Suppose these are 3 sets H, P and O. They represent students who got medals for honesty students who got medal for punctuality and students who got medal for obedience. So, there are 5 students should be written in this zone who got medals for all 3 values. Suppose this is N1, this is N2 and this is N3. So, we need to get the value of N1 plus N2 plus N3 means students who receive medals for exactly two of the three values means n1 plus n2 plus n3. So, let us start. It is given that 58 medals are given for honesty. 
So, total of this should be 58. Means, what is this? This is 58 minus n1 plus n2 plus 5. So, let us write 58 minus n1 plus n2 plus 5. This is number of students who got medals only for honesty. Similarly, we will figure out number of students who got medals only for punctuality. So, they will be 20 minus 20 minus n1 plus n3 plus 5. And number of students who got medals only for obedience will be 25 minus 25 minus n2 plus n3 plus 5. n2 plus n3 plus 5. So, we have got these numbers, medals only for honesty, only for punctuality and only for obedience. So, now we will add these areas separately and equate that to 78. So, we will add these 3 plus n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus 5 and equate that to 78. So, let us start adding. First, adding these 3 which represent this this and this. So, it will be 8 plus 5, 13, 1 carry over, 5 plus 1, 6 plus 2, 8 plus 2, 10, 103 minus n1 plus n1, n2 plus n2, n3 plus n3 means they will appear twice. So, 2 n1 plus 2 n2 plus 2 n3 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, 15 plus n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus 5, n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus 5, the total will be equal to 78. So, let us start simplifying. Now, 103 plus 5, 108, 108 minus 15, that will be equal to 93, minus 2 n1 plus n1, minus 2 n2 plus n2, minus 2 n3 plus n3. So, that will be equal to minus n1 plus n2 plus n3 in bracket and that is equal to 78. n1 plus n2 plus n3 is taken to other side. So, it will become positive. So, n1 plus n2 plus n3 is equal to 93 minus 78 and that is equal to 15. So, we have got our answer n1 plus n2 plus n3 is 15. So, there are 15 students who received medals for exactly two of the three values. Fifth question, if A and B are two sets and U is the universal set such that NU is equal to 700, NA is equal to 200, NB is equal to 300 and NA intersection B is 100 find an A dash intersection B dash. Whenever there is a talk about complements of two sets, you think about De Morgan's law. So, De Morgan's law states that A union B complement is equal to A dash intersection B dash. So, you can write it as N A union B dash is equal to N A dash intersection B dash. So, we have to figure out n a dash intersection b dash means this will be equal to this. So, we have to figure out what is the value of this. So, n a union b complement it will be equal to now n u is 700 n a is this n b is this and a intersection b. So, first we will figure out what is n a union b. So, N A union B, we know that this is equal to N A plus N B minus N A intersection B. That will be equal to N A. N A is given as 200 plus N B is given as 300 minus A intersection B is given as 100. So, it will be equal to 200 plus 300, 500 minus 100, 400. So, complement of A union B will be N A union B dash will be universal N U 
minus n a union b and that will be equal to n u is given as 700 so 700 minus 400 that will be equal to 300 so we have got our answer 300 sixth question for two sets a union b is equal to a if and only if b is subset of a or a is subset of b a is not equal to b or a is equal to b this is subset symbol this is subset symbol and this is proper subset symbol we will see symbols in a while so consider two sets set a and set b set b is fully inside set a then a union b when you do a union b you will get the result as a so it is possible only if b is subset of a so option a is correct seventh question two finite sets have m and n elements the number of elements in the power set of first set is 48 more than the total number of elements in power set of second set then the values of m and n are we need to figure out what is m what is n consider a set a having only one element let's say a then the subsets of a will be phi and a or the elements of power set will be p a will be equal to phi and a two elements consider a has two elements now a comma b so subsets of a will be phi a b and a comma b so power set of a here it will be phi a b and a comma b similarly when you have three elements in a consider three elements in a so a has a b and c elements in it so subsets of this will be phi a b c a and b b and c C and A and A, B and C. So, how many elements are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So, there is a relationship between the number of elements and number of subsets or number of elements in power set. If there is one element in set A, then there will be 2 to power 1 means 2 subsets or 2 elements in power set of A. If there are two elements in set A, then there will be 2 to power 2 means 4 subsets or 4 elements in power set of A. If there are 3 elements in set A, then there will be 2 to power 3 means 8 subsets or 8 elements in power set of A. Similarly, if there are m elements in a set, then there will be 2 to power m subsets or 2 to power m elements in power set of that set and if there are n elements there will be 2 to power n subsets or 2 to power n elements in power set of that set so it is given that two finite sets have m and n, n elements means they have 2 to power m elements in power set and 2 to power n elements in other sets power set so difference is 48 means this is bigger so 2 to power m minus 2 to power n is 48 so let us try out these values so if m is 7 n is 6 so it will be 2 to power 7 means 128 minus 2 to power 6 is 64 so difference is 64 which is not correct it should be 48 let's see if m is 6 n is 3 so 2 to power 6 is 64 minus 2 to power 3 is 8 so it will be 56 which is not correct third option is 6 and 4 means m is 6 and n is 4 so 2 to power 6 means 64 minus 2 to power 4 that is 16 so difference is 48 
So difference should be 48 means this is the correct option. Let us take a quick look at the symbols used in sets and their meaning. This is union, intersection, this is subset, this is proper subset, this is not subset, this is superset, this is proper superset, this is not superset, this is complement of set A, A and then as superscript written C. This is cardinality means the number of elements in set A, A cross B, Cartesian product of set A and set B. A symmetric difference B means elements that belong to either set A or set B but not to their intersection. So this concludes sets. Before moving ahead with the relations between sets, let us understand few related terms. First one is ordered pair. An ordered pair consists of a pair of elements in a given fixed order. You have already seen the example. Suppose this is a 2D Cartesian coordinate plane in which P is a point. You represent the point with the help of two variables in a given fixed order. So this is an example of ordered pair. It will never happen that Y coordinate comes first then X coordinate. It will always be the case that X coordinate comes first and then Y coordinate. So order is specific. Ordered pair is represented by a pair of small brackets then first element then second element separated by a comma. Suppose A and B are two sets. A is having one element A and B is having one element B. Then the ordered pair can be written as A comma B where A belongs to A and B belongs to B. Remember these two elements need not be distinct. Even A comma A or B comma B can be examples of ordered pair. Equality of ordered pairs. Suppose we have two ordered pairs a1, b1 and a2, b2. They are said to be equal if and only if a1 is equal to a2 and b1 is equal to b2. So we can say that a1, b1 is equal to a2, b2 if and only if a1 is equal to a2 and b1 is equal to b2. Let us see this question. Find the values of a and b if 2a minus 1 comma b minus 2 is equal to a plus 2 comma 5. So these are two ordered pairs which are equal. We know that two ordered pairs are equal if their first elements are equal and second elements are equal. So we will apply this condition. 2a minus 1 is equal to a plus 2. 2a minus 1 is equal to a plus 2. So a will come to this side, 2a minus a and minus 1 will go to the other side, it will become plus 1. So a is equal to 3. Similarly, we will equate second elements. b minus 2 is equal to 5. So b is equal to 2 plus 5. So b is equal to 7. So we have found the values of a and b for which these ordered pairs are equal. Means their first elements are equal and their second elements are equal. Second term is Cartesian product of two sets. Let us understand this. Consider two sets set A and set B. Set A is having elements A1, A2, A3, A4 and A5. Set B is having elements B1, B2 and B3. Then A cross B will have all the elements as ordered pairs. Means A1, B1, A1, B2, A1, B3, A2, B1, A2, B2, A2, B3, A3, B1, A3, B2, A3, B3, A4, B1, A4, B2, A4, B3 and A5, B1, A5, B2 and A5, B3. So A cross B can be defined in set builder as A cross B is equal to set of all ordered pairs A comma B such that A belongs to A and B belongs to B. Notice two points here. If A is empty set or B is empty set, then A cross B is empty set. Second point is if A is having M elements, B is having N elements, then A cross B will have 
m into n elements. Let us cross verify. A is having 5 elements, B is having 3 elements. So, A cross B will have 15 ordered pairs, 5 into 3. Let us see this question. If A is equal to this and B is equal to this, then find out A cross B, B cross A, A cross A, B cross B and A cross B intersection B cross A. So, let us start. A cross B. So, A cross B is equal to 2, 4, 6 cross 1, comma 2. So, we need to find out all the ordered pairs. 2, 1, 2, 2. Four one four two six one six two Similarly B cross A B cross A is equal to one comma two cross a is 2, 4, 6. So, it will have ordered pairs 1, 2, 1, 4, 1, 6. Two, 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 four, two, six. Now we will find out A cross A. So A cross A will be equal to 2, 4, 6 cross 2, 4, 6. So it will be equal to order pairs will be 2, 2, 2, 4, 2, 6. Four two four 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 six. Six two six four six six. Similarly, you can figure out B cross B. I will figure out A cross B intersection B cross A. So A cross B is this. B cross A is this. Let us see which ordered pairs are common. Only 2, 2 is common. So, we can write as A cross B intersection B cross A is equal to ordered pair 2 comma 2. Let us see Cartesian product of 3 sets. Consider 3 sets A, B and C. Then the Cartesian product of 3 sets A, B and C will be given by A cross B cross C. In set builder form, we can write A cross B cross C is equal to set of all ordered triplets such that A belongs to A, B belongs to B and C belongs to set C. Let us see this example. A is equal to this, B is equal to this, C is equal to this. Find out A cross B cross C. So, first we will do A cross B and then suppose the result is R, then we will do R cross C. So, A cross B is equal to 1 comma 2 cross C comma 4. So, it will be set of all ordered pairs here. 1 comma 3, 1 comma 4. Two three two four. Suppose this is R, then R cross C will be, we will write first 1 comma 3, 1, 4, 2, 3, 2, 4, cross, C is 4, 5, 6. And that will be equal to 
we will find ordered triplets now 1 3 4 1 3 5 1 3 6 One four four, one four five, one four six. Similarly, two three four, two three five, two three six. And two four four, two four five. 246. So we have got A cross B cross C. R represents A cross B. Let us see how to represent A cross B graphically as well as diagrammatically. First, graphically. Consider two sets A and B. A is having elements 2, 4, and 7 and B is having elements 3 and 6. Draw a horizontal line representing x-axis and a vertical line representing y-axis. They intersect at O. Now mark points 2, 4 and 7 which are elements of A on x-axis. Mark 3 and 6 on y-axis which are elements of set B. Draw 3 vertical lines passing through 2, 4 and 7 and two horizontal lines passing through 3 and 6. Now they intersect at some point. Mark those points. These points will represent the elements of A cross B means ordered pairs. So you can verify that 2 comma 3. 2 comma 3 is this point. 2 comma 6 is this point. 4 comma 3, 4 comma 6, 7 comma 3, 7 comma 6. So these are the elements of a cross B. That is how you draw the lattice. Let us see how to represent diagrammatically. There are two sets, set A and set B. Set A is having elements 2, 4 and 7 and set B is having elements 3 and 6. Now start connecting elements by lines and the arrow direction should be from A to B. So it is 2 to 3, 2 to 6, 4 to 3, 4 to 6, 7 to 3, 7 to 6. So all the connecting lines will represent ordered pairs. This diagram is also known as arrow diagram. Now let us understand relations. Suppose we are given two sets. One is player set, another is sport set. These are the name of players, these are the name of sports. So we can make ordered pairs such as Sachin Tendulkar, comma athletics, Sachin Tendulkar, comma boxing, Sachin Tendulkar, comma lawn tennis. Similarly, PV Sindhu, comma athletics, PV Sindhu, comma badminton, PV Sindhu, comma lawn tennis, Maricom, comma athletics, Maricom, comma wrestling, Maricom, comma badminton, and so on. So there will be 9 into 6 means 54 ordered pairs. Now suppose I define a relation. Relation is represented by capital R. And relation is, is related to cricket. So there will be some ordered pairs which will follow this relation and there will be some ordered pairs which will not follow this relation. For example, if I write Sachin Tendulkar capital R cricket. So this will follow the relation. Similarly, Virat Kohli capital R cricket. But if I write Leander Pace R cricket, this will not be right. So we have to cross it. This means Leander Pace is not related to cricket. This means Sachin Tendulkar is related to cricket. Virat Kohli is related to cricket. So that is how we define the relations. In the previous example, we have seen that there are some ordered pairs which follow the relation and there are some ordered pairs which do not follow the relation. That means R is always subset of A cross B. 
Now let us figure out how many total relations are possible. Suppose set A is having one element, one. So how many subsets can be made from this pi and one? Means two subsets. Suppose A is having two elements, means one comma two. So how many subsets can be made now? Pi, one, two, and one comma two. Suppose A is having three elements, A one, two, and three. So how many subsets are possible now? Pi, one, two, three. 1 comma 2, 1 comma 3, 2 comma 3, and 1 comma 2 comma 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 means 8 subsets can be made when a set is having 3 elements. So there is a certain relationship between number of elements and number of subsets. So that relationship is 2 to power number of elements. So in this case, number of elements is 1, so 2 to power 1 means 2 subsets are possible. In this case, 2 to power 2. In this case, 2 to power 3 subsets. So we can write that number of subsets, if the number of elements are m, can be 2 to power m. So now see, if there are m elements in set A and there are n elements in set B, means A cross B will have mn ordered pairs. As we have seen in the previous example, 9 into 6 is equal to 54 ordered pairs. And A cross B will have 2 to power m n subsets following this rule. Means A will have 2 to power m and B will have 2 to power n. So A cross B will have 2 to power m n subsets. Means A cross B will have maximum 2 to power m n relations. Now let us see how to represent a relation in roster form, set builder form, graphically and diagrammatically. Suppose there are two sets, set A and set B and the relation is defined as A R B if and only if A is less than B, where A belongs to A and B belongs to B. So A cross B set will have these many ordered pairs, how many? 4 into 3, 12 ordered pairs. And how to make them? 1 comma 2, 1 comma 4, 1 comma 7. Similarly, 2, 2, 2, 4, 2, 7, 3, 2, 3, 4, 3, 7, and 4, 2, 4, 4, 4, 7. So there are 12 ordered pairs which are elements of A cross B. Now some of the ordered pairs will follow this rule and some will not. So we will figure out which ordered pairs follow this rule. So R set will be equal to 1 comma 2 will follow that rule. So 1 comma 2 is included. 1 comma 4, yes. 1 comma 7, 2 comma 4, 2 comma 7, 3 comma 4, 3 comma 7, and 4 comma 7. They follow the rule A is less than B means first element is less than second element in ordered pair. So this is representation in roster form. Now let us see how to represent it in set builder form. So in set builder form we can represent set R as R is equal to set of all ordered pairs A comma B such that A belongs to set A, B belongs to set B and the condition means relation A is less than B. So this is how we represent this relation in set builder form. We can show the relation graphically by drawing lattice and highlight only those points which are part of set R. So these are the ordered pairs that will be highlighted here as points. So these points are 1, 2, 1, 4, 1, 7, 2, 4, 2, 7, 3, 4, 3, 7 and 4, 7. We can also show diagrammatically by drawing arrow diagram. First, we will write all those elements in set A and all those elements in set B. Then we will show connection only between those elements which are part of R, means as ordered pairs. So these are 1, 2, 1, 4, 1, 7, 
2427, 3437 and 47. Now let us see domain and range of a relation. In this relation set, all the distinct first elements of these ordered pairs will form the domain of this relation. So they will be 1, 2, 3 and 4. Similarly, all the distinct second elements of these ordered pairs will form range of this relation. So range will be 2, 4 and 7. Now let us see types of relations. There are eight types of relations. We will see them one by one. First one is empty relation. As the name suggests, empty relation will have no ordered pair in it. Consider two sets, set A and set B. Set A is having elements 1, 2, 3 and 6. Set B is having elements 4, 5 and 7. If I define a relation A R B if and only if A is equal to B, where A belongs to set A and B belongs to set B. You can see that no two elements are common. So this condition A is equal to B will not be met. Means relation set R will be empty. So second one is universal relation. Consider two sets set A and set B. If every element of set A is related to every element of set B, then this kind of relation is known as universal relation. Consider two sets set A and set B. Set A is having elements one, two, and three. And set B is having elements A and B. You may notice in this arrow diagram that all the elements of set A are related to all the elements of set B. Means 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 3A, and 3B. Actually, relation set R is nothing but A cross B. You will get all the ordered pairs when you do A cross B. Universal relation is also known as full relation. Empty relation and universal relation are also called as trivial relations. Third one is identity relation. When every element of a set maps to itself only, then it is called as identity relation. Consider two sets, set A and set B. They are having elements one, two, three, four, and set B is having elements one, two, three, and five. Then the identity relation will be when two elements inside the ordered pair are same. Means one comma one, two comma two, three comma three. There is no other ordered pair in this relation set. So you can see in this arrow diagram, one is related to one, two is related to two, three is related to three. There cannot be any other ordered pair in this relation set. So you can define as A R B if and only if A is equal to B, where A belongs to set A and B belongs to set B. Fourth one is inverse relation. Consider a relation set consisting of these ordered pairs: one comma two, two comma three, one comma three, and two comma four. Then R inverse or inverse relationship can be written as: just switch the elements inside the ordered pair. Means two comma one, three comma two, three comma one, and four comma two. So R inverse will have two one, three two, three one, and four two elements in it. Fifth one is reflexive relation. In this relation, every element is related to itself, plus it may be related to other elements as well. For example, consider two sets, set A and set B. Set A is having elements one, two, three, four. Set B is having elements one, two, three, five. Then the relation one, one, two, two, three, three must be there. Plus one may be related to two. Two may be related to three. So relation set is one one two two three three plus one two two three. Remember the difference between identity relation and reflexive relation is in identity relation only the ordered pairs one one two two and three three are allowed. However, in reflexive relation one and two may be connected to other elements like ordered pair one two and two three as well. Sixth one is symmetric relation. Consider A comma B ordered pair belongs to relation set R, and B comma A also belongs to relation set R. Then this relation will be called as symmetric relation. Seventh is transitive relation. Consider A comma B ordered pair belongs to relation set R, and B comma C also belongs to relation set R. 
then if a comma c ordered pair also belongs to relational set r then it is called transitive relation notice here the second element of first ordered pair and first element of second ordered pair they are same then first element of first order pair and second element of second order pair are also part of relation set R, then it is transitive relation. Last one is equivalence relation. A relation is said to be equivalence relation when it is reflexive, symmetric and transitive altogether. Let us see this example. Suppose there are two sets, set A and set B. Set A is having elements 1, 2 and 3 and set B is having elements 2, 1, 3 and 4. I have got a relation set R by doing A cross B. So, I have got all these ordered pairs. Now, this relation set is universal relation. So, let us check if universal relation is also equivalence relation or not. Let us check for reflexive. To be reflexive, it must have ordered pairs 1, 1, 2, 2 and 3, 3. Means 1, 1, 2, 2 and 3, 3 are there. So, this relation is reflexive. Let us check for symmetric. To be symmetric, we must have ordered pairs 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, 3 and 3, 1. They all are here. So, this relation is symmetric as well. Transitive. For transitive, 1, 2, 2, 3 and 1, 3 must be there. These ordered pairs, let us check 1, 2, 2, 3 and 1, 3. 1, 2, 2, 3 and 1, 3. They all are here. Means this relation is transitive as well. So, this relation is having all three properties. So, it is equivalence relation. Before starting functions, we need to learn two important topics, intervals and inequalities. Let us see intervals first. In mathematics, an interval means a range of numbers between two given numbers in real number set. Suppose A and B are two real numbers and A is less than B. So, a range of numbers between A and B can be defined in three different ways. First one is open interval, second one is closed interval and third one is half open interval. Half open interval can be further categorized into semi-open, semi-closed and semi-closed, semi-open. Let us see them in detail. First one is open interval. A range of numbers between A and B excluding A and B is called open interval. It is represented by A comma B within a pair of parentheses or this symbol. This is more popular. In set builder form, we can write A comma B within a pair of parentheses is equal to set of all x such that A is less than x and x is less than B. On the real number line, it can be represented by a small unfilled circle. So, a small unfilled circle on A and a small unfilled circle on B excludes them. Second one is closed interval. A range of numbers between A and B including A and B is called closed interval. It is represented by A comma B within a pair of square brackets. It can be represented in set builder form as A comma B within a pair of square brackets is equal to set of all x such that A is less than or equal to x and x is less than or equal to B. On the real number line, it can be represented by a small filled circle. So, a small filled circle on A and a small filled circle on B includes them. Third one is half open interval. Let us see semi-open, semi-close. It means open from left and close from right. In set builder form, A comma B open from left and close from right is equal to set of all x such that A is less than x and x is less than or equal to B. On the real number line, it is open from left and close from right. Semi-close, semi-open. That is close from left and open from right. In set builder form, A comma B close from left and open from right is equal to set of all x such that A is less than or equal to x and x is less than B. On the real number line, close from left and open from right. Now let us see inequalities. Inequality means in place of equal to sign either less than or greater than 
or less than or equal to or greater than or equal to sign will come. Consider this inequality x minus a1 to power n1 into x minus a2 to power n2 into x minus a3 to power n3 and so on up to x minus am to power nm divided by x minus b1 to power p1 into x minus b2 to power p2 into x minus b3 to power p3 and so on up to x minus bm to power pm is less than 0. Here a1, a2, a3 up to am and b1, p2, b3 up to bm are real numbers and all these powers n1, n2, n3 up to nm and p1, p2, p3 up to pm are natural numbers. We will consider two cases. First, when all these powers are equal to 1 and second, when all these powers are not equal to 1. So, we will consider case number 1 first. Consider we have to solve this inequality x minus 2 into x minus 3 is greater than 0. This can be done by two methods. First, method of intervals and second, wavy curve method. First method, method of intervals. To solve this inequality, first step is to find out critical points. To find out critical points, you need to equate this equal to 0 and this equal to 0. When x minus 2 is equal to 0, it will give you a point x equal to 2 and when x minus 3 is equal to 0, it will give you a point x equal to 3. So, critical points are those points where function changes the sign means at x equal to 2, this function x minus 2 will change the sign. At x equal to 3, this function x minus 3 will change the sign. From this, it is clear that either both should be positive or both should be negative for their multiplication to be greater than 0. Now, you have got two critical points x equal to 2 and x equal to 3. Locate these points on real number line. When x is less than 2, x minus 2 will be negative. When x is less than 3, x minus 3 will be negative. So, combining these two statements, we can say when x is less than 2, x minus 3 and x minus 2 both will be negative. And when x is greater than 3, x minus 2 and x minus 3 both will be positive. So, this condition that either both should be positive or both should be negative for their multiplication to be greater than 0 is fulfilled by this condition that x belongs to minus infinity to 2 union 3 infinity means x should be either less than 2 or greater than 3. Second method, wavy curve method. We have got two critical points x equal to 2 and x equal to 3 on real number line. Above the real number line will be considered positive and below it negative. Now start forming a wave starting from rightmost critical point to leftmost critical point and starting from the positive side of the real number line to negative side like this. Now solution of this inequality x minus 2 into x minus 3 greater than 0 will lie on the positive side of the real number line. And in this region between curve and real number line, between curve and real number line. So, x is less than 2 and x is greater than 3 is the solution. So, x belongs to minus infinity to 2 union 3 infinity is the solution of this inequality. Second case, when all the powers are not equal to 1. Consider this inequality x minus 1 to power 2 into x minus 3 to power 4 upon x minus 2 to power 5 into x minus 4 to power 3 is less than or equal to 0, x cannot be equal to 2 or 4. So, the rule is for even power wave touches the real number line and for odd power wave crosses the real number line. So, we have to first locate our critical points and they will be 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, we have located 1, 2, 3 and 4 on the number line. Now, we have to form the wave starting from the rightmost critical point and from the positive side of the real number line. So, at 4, the power is odd means wave crosses the real number line. So, like this. At 3, power is even. So, wave touches the real number line and at 2, power is odd. So, again wave crosses the real number line and at 1 power is even. So, wave touches the real number line. So, this will be the wave form.
since the inequality is less than or equal to 0 so we have to consider this negative region bounded by this curve and real number 9 so solution set will be x belongs to 2 comma 3 union 3 comma 4 now 2 and 4 these will be excluded from the solution set also 1 will be the solution because if you put 1 x minus 1 will be 0 so 0 is equal to 0 the condition will be satisfied so the complete solution set will be x belongs to 0.1 union 2 comma 3 union 3 comma 4 2 and 4 will not be included but 0.3 will be included as when you put x equal to 3 it will be 0 is equal to 0 means condition is satisfied now let us see functions functions are one of the most important concepts in mathematics so obviously one of the favorite topics of j so let us understand functions consider two sets set a and set b a relation from set a to set b can be called as function if the relation fulfills two conditions Condition number 1, all the elements in set A should be mapped to some element in set B. Here the keyword map, mapping or corresponding are synonymous to function. So the first condition is all the elements should be mapped to some element in set B. Means none of the elements in set A should remain unmapped or left out. Second condition there must be a unique element in set B corresponding to every element in set A means there may be two or more elements in set A correspond to only one element in set B means there may be two scenarios either one to one relation can be called as function or many to one relation can be called as a function but many to many and one to many relations cannot be called as functions. A function is represented by f colon a forward arrow b which means function exists and there is a function from set a to set b. Let us see this question. If x comma y belong to 1, 2, 3 and 4 then which of the following are functions in the given set? These are the parts of the question. Consider two sets set a and set b. They are having same four elements 1, 2, 3 and 4. 1, 2, 3 and 4 and 1, 2, 3 and 4. X belongs to A and Y belongs to B. We can form various order pairs X comma Y following some condition. First part F1 is equal to order pairs X comma Y such that Y is equal to X plus 1. It means F1 is made of order pairs following this rule. So, ordered pairs will be 1, 2, 2, 3 and 3, 4 following this rule. We have to figure out whether f1 exists or does not exist. For any function to exist, there are two conditions. First, all the first elements must be present in ordered pairs and second, first elements cannot be repeated. So, let us figure out. 1 comma 2, 2 comma 3, 3 comma 4. First elements are 1, 2 and 3. 1, 2 and 3. 4 is missing. Means 4 is unmapped. So F1 does not exist. Let us see part B. F2 is equal to X comma Y such that X plus Y is greater than 4. So following this rule, ordered pairs will be 1 comma 4, 4 comma 1, 2 comma 3, 3 comma 2, 2 comma 4, 4 comma 2, 3 comma 4 and 4 comma 3. So whether first elements are present or not we have to check first 1, 2, 3 and 4. 1, 4, 2 and 3. Yes, first elements are present. Let us check for second condition. Means first elements cannot be repeated in ordered pairs. 2 comma 3, 2 comma 4. First element is repeating. 3 comma 2, 3 comma 4. First element is repeating. Now 4 comma 2, 4 comma 3. Again the first elements are repeating. So F2 does not exist. Let us see part C. F3 is equal to x comma y colon y is less than x. 
So these will be the ordered pairs f3 is equal to 2 comma 1, 3 comma 1, 3 comma 2, 4 comma 1, 4 comma 2, 4 comma 3. So let us see whether first elements are present or not. So 2, 3, 4, 1 is missing. So 1 is missing means f3 does not exist. Also 3, 3, first element is repeating. 4, 4, 4, first element is repeating. So f3 does not exist. Let us see last part f4 is equal to x comma y colon x plus y is 5. So these are the ordered pairs following this rule. f4 is equal to 1 comma 4, 4 comma 1, 2 comma 3, 3 comma 2. So the first condition all the elements should be present as first element. So 1, 4, 2, 3. Yes, all the elements are present. Condition number 2, no first element should be repeated in ordered pairs. So 1, 4, 2 and 3. They are uni. So F4 exists. Let us understand these terms. Image, pre-image, domain, co-domain and range. Consider two sets. Set A and set B. Set A is having elements 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And set B is having elements A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. 1 is mapped to A. 2 is mapped to C. 3 is mapped to D, 4 is mapped to D and 5 is mapped to E. Then A is image of 1, C is image of 2, D is image of 3, D is image of 4 and E is image of 5. Also 1 is pre-image of A, 2 is pre-image of C, 3 is pre-image of D, 4 is pre-image of D and 5 is pre-image of E. Now let us see domain, codomain and range. Domain of this function is equal to made of these elements. Means set A 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Codomain is set B made of all these elements A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. But range of function is made of only images. Means A, C, D and E equal functions. Two functions f and g are said to be equal functions if and only if they follow three conditions. Condition number one, domain of f is equal to domain of g. Condition number two, codomain of f is equal to codomain of g. And condition number three, fx equal to gx for every x belonging to their common domain. Let us see this question. A is equal to 1 comma 2, B is equal to 3 comma 6 and f is a function from A to B given by fx equal to x square plus 2 and g is a function from A to B given by gx equal to 3x is f equal to g. It is given that f is a function from A to B and g is a function from A to B. That means their domains A and A are same and their codomains B and B are same. So first two conditions are met. Now we will check whether F1 is equal to G1 and F2 is equal to G2 or not. So Fx is given by x square plus 2. When x is 1, F1 will be 1 square plus 2 means 3. And F2 will be 2 square plus 2 that is 6. Let us check for G1. G1 is equal to 3 into 1 means 3. G2 is equal to 3 into 2 that is 6. So whether F1 is equal to G1? Yes. Whether F2 is equal to G2? Yes. So F is equal to G. Let us see these two questions that are related to functions basics. First question, express the following function as a set of ordered pairs and determine its range. F is a function from A to R fx equal to 2x square minus 3, where a is 0, 1, 3 and 4. Consider two sets, set A and set R. Set A is having elements 0, 1, 3 and 4. We have to find out their corresponding images following this rule. So we have to calculate f0, f1, f3 and f4. f0 is equal to 2 into 0 square minus 3 that is minus 3. F1 is equal to 2 into 1 square minus 3 that is minus 1. 
f3 is equal to 2 into 3 square minus 3 that is 15 and f4 is equal to 2 into 4 square minus 3 that is 29. So, we have figured out all those images. So, the ordered pair will be f is equal to 0 minus 3, 1 minus 1, 3, 15, 4, 29 and range of function will be set of all these images that is equal to minus 3, minus 1, 15 and 29. Second question, let f colon r2r be a function given by fx equal to x square plus 1. Find f inverse minus 5 and f inverse 26. Consider two sets r and r set of real numbers. There is an image minus 5 in codomain. You need to figure out corresponding pre-image in domain. Assume x is pre-image. So, the image is given by f of x. Equate fx to minus 5. Also, fx is given as x square plus 1. So, x square plus 1 is equal to minus 5. Means, x square is equal to minus 5 minus 1. That is minus 6. It is not possible because the square of any number is always positive. So, x is equal to 5. What it means? It means corresponding to minus 5, there is no pre-image in set R or domain. Second part, f inverse 26. Following the same method, we will equate fx is equal to 26. So, x square is equal to 25 means x equal to plus minus 5. That is, there are two pre-images corresponding to 26 and they are 5 and minus 5 in domain. Let us see real valued function and real function. Consider two sets, set A and set B. There is a function f1 from set A to set B. If set B is subset of set of real numbers, we call this function as real valued function. If A is also subset of set of real numbers, then we call this function as real function. Now, let us find out domain and range of a given function with the help of these questions. First question, find the domain of each of the following real valued functions. These are the functions given. Consider two sets, set A and set B. There is a function defined from set A to set B. Set B is a subset of R, means real number set, as it is given as real valued function. In fact, set A is also subset of R, means set of real numbers. First part, fx equal to 1 upon x plus 2. If you put x equal to minus 2, then f of minus 2 will be equal to 1 upon 0, means infinity. What it means is, there is an element minus 2 in domain, which needs to be mapped to infinity in codomain, which is not possible. So, x will have all those real numbers except x equal to minus 2. So, it will be written as domain of f is equal to r means set of all real numbers minus this point under a pair of curly braces that is minus 2. Second part, fx equal to 2x minus 3 upon x square minus 3x plus 2. Now, denominator can be factorized as x minus 2 into x minus 1. Now, in this case, similar to first, two points need to be avoided, means x equal to 1 and x equal to 2. So, domain of f is equal to r minus these two points, 1 comma 2 under a pair of curly braces will be written. Third part, fx equal to 1 upon under root 1 minus x. So, 1 minus x must be greater than or equal to 0, but it being in the denominator cannot be equal to 0. So, the condition for 1 minus x will be greater than 0. So, 1 is greater than x or x is less than 1. So, domain of f is equal to minus infinity comma 1. 1 is not included. Last part, fx equal to under root 4 minus x square. So, 4 minus x square must be greater than or equal to 0. So, 4 is greater than or equal to x square or x square is less than or equal to 4 transfer 4 to this side. So, x square minus 4 is less than or equal to 0. Now, factorize this by a square minus b square is equal to a plus b into a minus b. So, it can be written as x plus 2 into x minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. 
Now we will solve this inequality by wavy curve method. So the critical points are minus 2 and plus 2. So minus 2 and plus 2 are located on the real number line. We start forming the wave from the positive side and from the rightmost critical point towards leftmost critical point. So this is the wave formed. Now this is less than or equal to 0 means we have to consider this negative zone bounded by the curve and real number line. So domain of f will be under a pair of square brackets minus 2 and 2 means these points are included. Second question find the range of the following function fx equal to x upon 1 plus x square put fx equal to y. So y is equal to x upon 1 plus x square. Now we have to figure out x is equal to what in terms of y. Cross multiply 1 plus x square to y that is equal to x or y plus x square y is equal to x or x square y minus x plus y is equal to 0. So it is quadratic in x. We can solve this by x equal to minus b plus minus under root b square minus 4ac upon 2a. So it will be x equal to 1 plus minus under root 1 minus 4y square upon 2y. Now there will be two conditions. y cannot be equal to 0 and 1 minus 4y square will be greater than or equal to 0. So we can simplify this further. 1 is greater than or equal to 4y square or 4y square is less than or equal to 1 or y square is less than or equal to 1 by 4 or y square minus 1 by 4 is less than or equal to 0. Now this can be factorized into two parts y plus 1 by 2 into y minus 1 by 2. This is less than or equal to 0 and y is not equal to 0. We can solve this inequality by wavy curve method. Critical points are minus 1 by 2 and 1 by 2. Now start forming the wave starting from the positive side and rightmost critical point. So this will be the wave formed and this is less than or equal to 0 means we have to consider this negative part only. So this will be the solution set y belongs to closed interval minus 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 minus 0 because y cannot be 0. So it needs to be taken out minus 0 in a pair of curly braces. Now let us talk about types of functions and their graphs. There are 14 functions we will talk about one by one. First one is constant function. Constant function is given by fx equal to k where k is some constant. Its graph will be a straight line parallel to x-axis. If k is positive, it will be above x-axis. If k is negative, it will be below x-axis. Second is identity function. The function that associates each real number to itself is called the identity function. Usually it is denoted by capital I. Consider two sets, set A and set B having elements x1, x2, x3 and x1, x2, x3. When each element associates to itself means x1 is mapped to x1, x2 is mapped to x2 and x3 is mapped to x3. So this function will be called as identity function. So ix is equal to x. Its graph will be a straight line making an angle 45 degree with the positive x axis. So this is ix equal to x. Third function modulus function or absolute value function. It is given by fx equal to mod x. For x greater than or equal to 0, fx equal to x. And for x less than 0, fx equal to minus x. Remember at x equal to 0, fx equal to x. Its graph is given by two rays. When x is greater than or equal to 0, fx equal to x, making an angle 45 degree with the positive x axis. And when x is less than 0, fx equal to minus x, making an angle 45 degree with the negative x axis. We will come back to this function in next video. We will talk more about it. Fourth function, greatest integer function. It is also called as floor function or step function. Greatest integer of a real number x will be greatest integer less than or equal to x. It is represented by fx equal to x in a pair of square brackets. 
consider x is equal to 2 then the greatest integer will be 2 if x equal to 2.25 then it can be written as 2 plus 0.25 remember the decimal part is always positive so in this case greatest integer will be 2 if x is equal to minus 2.25 then it can be represented as minus 3 plus 0.75 in this case, the greatest integer will be minus 3. So, the trick is if the number is positive, then the greatest integer will be its integer part. If the number is negative, then the greatest integer will be 1 less than the given integer. Its graph is like this. Only the integer parts are taken. Fifth function, smallest integer function. It is also called as ceiling function. It is also a step function. A smallest integer for a real number x will be given by a smallest integer greater than or equal to x. Remember, greatest integer function can be represented by either by this symbol or this symbol. Now consider x equal to 5. So, a smallest integer which is greater than or equal to 5 is 5. Consider x equal to 2.25. So, 2.25 can be written as 2 plus 0.25. So, a smallest integer which is greater than this will be 2 plus 1 that is 3. Consider x equal to minus 2.25. So, minus 2.25 can be written as minus 3 plus 0.75. So, a smallest integer which is greater than this will be minus 3 plus 1 that is minus 2. Graph of this function is like this. Only the integer values are considered. Sixth function, fractional part function. Only the fractional part of the x is taken. And it is represented by fx equal to x in a pair of curly braces. And this is equal to x minus greatest integer x. Consider x equal to 5. So, fractional part is 0. So, f5 is 0. If x is 2.25, it can be written as 2 plus 0.25. So, fractional part is 0.25. So, f2.25 will be equal to 0.25. Suppose x is minus 2.25. So, it can be written as minus 3 plus 0.75. Fractional part is 0.75. So, f minus 2.25 will be equal to 0.75. Graph of this function is like this. Only the fractional part is considered. Seventh function is signum function. It is defined by fx equal to mod x upon x if x is not equal to 0 and 0 when x equal to 0 or fx equal to 1 when x is greater than 0, 0 when x is equal to 0 and minus 1 when x is less than 0. This is easy to remember. Its graph is like this. Only 1, 0 and minus 1 values are considered. Eighth function, exponential function. It is given by fx equal to a to power x where a is greater than 0 and a is not equal to 1. It means a lies between 0 to 1 or a is greater than 1. So, these are two cases. Case 1 when a is greater than 1. So, fx equal to a to power x graph is like this. When x equal to 2 and when x equal to 3, fx equal to a to power x graph is like this. Case 2, when a lies between 0 to 1, fx equal to a to power x graph is like this. And when x equal to 1 by 2 and when x equal to 1 by 3, fx equal to a to power x graph is like this. Ninth function is logarithmic function. It is given by fx is equal to log x base a, where a is greater than 0, a is not equal to 1 and x is greater than 0. So, a can be either between 0 to 1 or greater than 1. Accordingly, we will consider two cases. Case 1 when a is greater than 1. fx equal to log x base a. It is negative when x lies between 0 to 1. It is equal to 0 when x is equal to 1. And it is positive for x is greater than 1. And its graph is like this. Case 2 when a lies between 0 to 1 fx is equal to log x base a. It is positive for x lying between 0 to 1. It is 0 for x is equal to 1 and it is negative for x greater than 1 
and its graph is like this. Exponential function and logarithmic function are inverse functions. Let us see how. Logarithmic function is given by fx is equal to log x base a. We can write y is equal to log x base a. It means x is equal to a to power y. And we know that exponential function is given by y is equal to a to power x. So, this is inverse exponential function. Means we can say that logarithmic function is inverse exponential function. Tenth function is reciprocal function. It is given by fx is equal to 1 by x. x cannot be equal to 0. That's why its domain consists of all real numbers except 0. Its graph is like this and this. Eleventh function is square function. It is given by fx is equal to x square. Its domain consists of all real numbers but its range consists of only positive real numbers because the square of any number is always positive and its graph is like this which is parabolic. Twelfth function is square root function. It is given by fx is equal to under root x. x must always be positive. That's why its domain consists of all positive real numbers and its graph is like this. Thirteenth function, cube function. It is given by fx is equal to x cube and its graph is like this. Fourteenth function, cube root function. It is given by fx is equal to cube root of x that is x to power 1 by 3 and its graph is like this. Notice the difference between two graphs. Let us see modulus equations and modulus inequalities. First, we will see modulus equations. First question, solve for x. Mod x minus 1 is equal to 2. Recall the definition of modulus function that is fx equal to mod x. fx is equal to x if x is greater than 0 and fx is equal to minus x if x is less than 0. So, applying this definition in this case, mod x minus 1 is equal to x minus 1 if x minus 1 is greater than 0 and mod x minus 1 is equal to minus inside bracket x minus 1 if x minus 1 is less than 0. In other words, first step is to find out the critical points. So, x minus 1 is equal to 0 or x is equal to 1 is critical point. Critical points are those points where function changes the sign. So, at x equal to 1, this function mod x minus 1 changes the sign. So, accordingly, we will consider two cases when x is greater than 1 and when x is less than 1. First case when x is greater than 1. So, mod x minus 1 will be written as x minus 1. So, x minus 1 is equal to 2 or x is equal to 3. We will check whether x is equal to 3 is solution or not against this condition. So, x is equal to 3 whether x is greater than 1? Yes. So, this is solution. Second case when x is less than 1. So, mod x minus 1 will be written as minus x minus 1. So, minus x minus 1 is equal to 2 or x is equal to minus 1. Again, we will check whether x is equal to minus 1 is solution or not against this condition. So, x is equal to minus 1 whether x is less than 1? Yes. So, this is another solution. So, there are two solutions x equal to 3 and x equal to minus 1. So, we can write it as x belongs to these two points minus 1 and 3. Second question inside mod mod x minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 4. We will consider inner mod first. Critical point for this is x is equal to 1. So, we will consider two cases when x is greater than 1 and when x is less than 1. When x is greater than 1, mod x minus 1 will be written as x minus 1. So, it will be within mod x minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 4. When x is less than 1, mod x minus 1 will be written as minus x minus 1. So, it will be within mod minus x minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 4. Now, consider this case first. For x greater than 1, mod x minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 4. So, mod x equal to 4. For x greater than 1, mod x will always be equal to x. So, x is equal to 4. Now, check x is equal to 4 is solution or not against this condition. So, x is equal to 4 
whether x is greater than 1? Yes. So, this is one solution. Second case, when x is less than 1, mod minus x plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 4 or mod minus x plus 2 is equal to 4. Now, this is our condition, x is less than 1. So, x is less than 1. For x less than 1, mod of minus x plus 2, this will always be positive. So, it will be written as mod of minus x plus 2 as minus x plus 2 is equal to 4 or x equal to 2 minus 4 or x equal to minus 2. So, let us check whether x equal to minus 2 is solution or not against this condition. So, x is equal to minus 2 whether x is less than 1? Yes. So, this is another solution. So, there are two possible solutions x is equal to minus 2 and x is equal to 4. So, we can write it as x belongs to these two points minus 2 and 4. Third question mod x plus 1 plus mod x minus 1 plus mod x minus 5 is equal to 4. Critical points will be x is equal to minus 1, x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 5. So, we will consider the cases when x is less than minus 1, when x lies between minus 1 to 1, when x lies between 1 to 5 and when x is greater than 5. So, let us consider all these cases one by one. When x is less than minus 1, all of them will be negative. So, we will write it as minus x plus 1 minus x minus 1 minus x minus 5 is equal to 4. That gives x is equal to 1 by 3. So, we have to check whether this is solution against this condition. So, x is equal to 1 by 3 whether x is less than minus 1? No. So, this is not the solution. Second case, when x lies between minus 1 to 1, this will be positive, these will be negative. So, we will write it as x plus 1 minus x minus 1 minus x minus 5 is equal to 4. This gives x as x equal to 3. So, x is equal to 3 whether x lies between minus 1 to 1? No. So, this also is not the solution. Third case, when x lies between 1 to 5. So, these two will be positive and this will be negative. So, x plus 1 plus x minus 1 minus x minus 5 is equal to 4. This gives x as x is equal to minus 1. Let us check against this condition. So, x is equal to minus 1 whether x lies between 1 to 5? No. So, this also is not the solution. Fourth case, when x is greater than 5. So, all of them will be positive. So, x plus 1 plus x minus 1 plus x minus 5 is equal to 4. This gives x as x is equal to 3. Let us check against this. So, x is equal to 3 whether x is greater than 5? No. So, this also is not the solution. So, we didn't find any solution in any case. So, there is no solution. So, x belongs to 5. Now, let us see modulus inequalities. Modulus inequalities are solved the same way as we solve modulus equations. These are four formulas related to modulus inequalities. Sometimes, we may apply one of these formulas to reach the result in one step. For example, suppose we have to solve mod x minus 1 is less than 4. So, this matches with first one and the result is x will lie between minus a to plus a if a is greater than 0 and x will have no solution if a is less than or equal to 0. In our case, x is x minus 1 and a is 4. So, we can apply this result and we can say that x minus 1 will lie between minus 4 to plus 4 or x will lie between minus 3 to plus 5. So, we have reached the result in one step. However, we can reach the same result in few more steps by our usual analytical approach. Fourth question, mod x minus 2 plus mod x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 5. First step is to find out critical points and they will be x is equal to 2 and x is equal to minus 3. So, we will consider three cases when x is less than minus 3, when x lies between minus 3 to 2 and when x is greater than or equal to 2. First case, when x is less than minus 3. So, both of them will be negative. So, we will write minus x minus 2 minus x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 5. 
so we will reach here x is less than or equal to minus 3 we will check the solution against this condition which is true so x less than or equal to minus 3 is one solution second case when x lies between minus 3 and 2 so this will be negative and this will be positive so minus x minus 2 plus x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 5 that means 5 is greater than or equal to 5 which is true when 5 is equal to 5 so this also is one solution when x lies between minus 3 to 2 third case when x is greater than or equal to 2 so both will be positive so we will write x minus 2 plus x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 5 that means x is greater than or equal to 2 we will check against this condition which is the same so this is also one solution now combining all three solutions this this and this we can say that x may be any real number fifth question mod of x minus 1 upon x plus 2 is greater than 2 we will see seven properties of modulus in a moment one of them is mod of a upon b is equal to mod a upon mod b so we will rewrite this as mod x minus 1 upon mod x plus 2 is greater than 2 now cross multiply so it will be mod x minus 1 is greater than 2 times of mod x plus 2 change the side it will be mod x minus 1 minus 2 times of mod x plus 2 is greater than 0 now the critical points will be x equal to 1 and x equal to minus 2 so we will consider three cases when x is less than minus 2 when x lies between minus 2 to 1 and when x is greater than 1 case 1 when x is less than minus 2 so both of them will be negative so we will write minus x minus 1 minus 2 minus x plus 2 greater than 0 so this comes out to be x is greater than minus 5 now this solution and this condition when you combine the solution comes out to be x belongs to minus 5 to minus 2 second case when x lies between minus 2 to 1 so this will be negative this will be positive so we will write this as minus x minus 1 minus 2 x plus 2 is greater than 0 so this comes out to be x is less than minus 1 now when you combine this solution and this condition x comes out to be x belongs to minus 2 to minus 1 third case when x is greater than or equal to 1 so both of them will be positive so we will write this as x minus 1 minus 2 times of x plus 2 is greater than 0 so this comes out to be x is less than minus 5 now this solution and this condition doesn't match because the condition says x should be greater than or equal to 1 and solution comes as x is less than minus 5 so no solution in this case so final solution will be a combination of this solution and this solution now we can say that x belongs to minus 5 to minus 1 excluding these two points there are seven properties of modulus for any a b which are real first property mod of a is greater than or equal to 0 means mod of any number is always positive second mod a is equal to mod of minus a third mod of a b is equal to mod a into mod b fourth mod of a by b is equal to mod a upon mod b this property we have just used fifth property mod of a plus b is less than or equal to mod a plus mod b sixth property mod of a minus b is greater than or equal to mod a minus mod b last property mod of mod a minus mod b is equal to mod of a minus b if and only if a b is greater than or equal to zero before the calculators and computers came into picture people used to do multiplication and division of large numbers using logarithms it was possible to compute such kind of expressions in a matter of few steps using log tables today with mobile in hand using log tables is kind of obsolete let us see the definition of logarithm logarithm is defined as the exponent or power to which a base must be raised to yield a given number for example we know that 3 to power 4 is equal to 81 so we say that 4 is the logarithm of 81 to the base 3 we write it as 
4 is equal to log 81 to the base 3. In exponent form, we write it as 3 to power 4 is equal to 81 or base to power logarithm is equal to number. In general, a to power x is equal to n means x is equal to log n to the base a. Condition on n and a should be n should be greater than 0, a should be greater than 0, but a should not be equal to 1. There are three limitations of logarithms. First one we have seen here x is equal to log n base a means n should be greater than 0, a should be greater than 0 and a should not be equal to 1. Second condition logarithm of 0 does not exist means n should not be equal to 0. Third condition logarithm of negative real numbers is not defined means n cannot be less than 0. Now let us see three important results. First one log 1 to any base is equal to 0. Second one log of a number to the same base is equal to 1. That means log a to the base a is equal to 1. Third one log of a number to its reciprocal base is equal to minus 1. That means log of a to the base 1 by a or log of 1 by a to the base a is equal to minus 1. Now let us see the properties of logarithms. There are 8 properties we will see one by one. First one product log. Log of mn to the base a is equal to log m to the base a plus log n to the base a. Second one ratios log. Log of m by n to the base a is equal to log m to the base a minus log n to the base a. Third one powers law. Log of n to power p to the base a is equal to p times log n to the base a. So this power can be shifted here. Fourth one roots law. Log of qth root of n to the base a is equal to 1 by q log n to the base a. Alternatively, this can be written as this log n to power 1 by q to the base a is equal to now using powers law. 1 by q can be shifted here. So it will be equal to 1 by q times log n to the base a. Fifth one change of base law. Log a to the base b is equal to log a to the base m upon log b to the base m. Sixth one log a to the base b into log b to the base a is equal to 1 or log a to the base b is equal to 1 upon log b to the base a. Seventh one a to power log c to the base b is equal to c to power log a base b. a and c can be swapped. Eighth one log m to the base a to power k is equal to 1 by k log m to the base a. So this power can be shifted here as reciprocal of the power. There are two types of logarithms. One is natural logarithm and the other is common logarithm. Natural logarithm is taken on base e. For example, log 2 base e. It is written as ln 2. Common logarithm is taken on base 10. For example, log 2 base 10. Value of e is approximately 2.718. Let us see how to interchange these two logarithms. As per base changing rule, we can write log a base e is equal to log a base 10 upon log e base 10. Value of e is 2.718. So from log table, we can calculate 1 upon log 2.718 to the base 10. Comes out to be 2.303. So log a base e is equal to 2.303 log a base 10. One log can be calculated knowing the other. Now let us see couple of questions based on logarithmic properties. First question log x to the base a is equal to m and log x square to the base b is equal to n. Then log root a b to the base x is equal to. It is given that log x to the base a is equal to m and log x square to the base b is equal to n. This power can be shifted here. So 2 log x to the base b is equal to n. Take 2 to the other side. So log x to the base b is equal to n by 2. We have to calculate the value of log root ab to the base x. Root ab can be written as ab to power 1 by 2. This power can be taken here. 
So 1 by 2 log AB to the base X. This can be simplified as log A to the base X plus log B to the base X. And log A to the base X can be written as 1 upon log X to the base C. And log B to the base X can be written as 1 upon log X to the base B. We can substitute the values of log X to the base A and log X to the base B from here and here. So it will be 1 by 2, 1 upon m plus 1 upon n by 2. Now 2 will go to the numerator. So it will be 1 by 2, 1 by m plus 2 by n. After removing the bracket, it will be 1 by 2 m plus 1 by n. Second question, log 9 to the base 8 into log 8 to the base 7 into log 7 to the base 6 into log 6 to the base 5 into log 5 to the base 4 into log 4 to the base 3 is equal to what? Notice here that one's base is other's number. So we can apply base changing theorem here. Log 8 to the base 7 can be written as 1 upon log 7 to the base 8. Log 6 to the base 5 can be written as 1 upon log 5 to the base 6. And log 4 to the base 3 can be written as 1 upon log 3 to the base 4. Now combine two two numbers. So it will be log 9 to the base 8 upon log 7 to the base 8 into log 7 to the base 6 upon log 5 to the base 6 into log 5 to the base 4 upon log 3 to the base 4. This will be equal to log 9 base 7. This will be equal to log 7 to the base 5 and this will be equal to log 5 to the base 3. Log 7 to the base 5 can be written as 1 upon log 5 to the base 7. Now combining these two, it will be log 9 to the base 7 upon log 5 to the base 7 into log 5 to the base 3. Now this will be equal to log 9 to the base 5 into log 5 to the base 3. Log 5 to the base 3 can be written as 1 upon log 3 to the base 5. So this will be equal to log 9 to the base 5 upon log 3 to the base 5. And this will be equal to log 9 to the base 3. 9 can be written as 3 to power 2 and this power can be shifted here. So it will be 2 log 3 to the base 3 and we know that log a to the base a is equal to 1. So this will be 2 into 1 that is 2. Now let us see a couple of important observations. Point number 1, if base of logarithm is greater than 1, then logarithm of greater number is greater. For example, log 3 base 10 is greater than log 2 base 10. If base of logarithm is greater than 1, then logarithm of greater number is greater. Second point, if base of logarithm lies between 0 to 1, then logarithm of greater number is smaller. For example, log 27 to the base 1 by 3 is less than log 9 to the base 1 by 3. It can be simplified as log 3 to power 3 to the base 1 by 3 and this power can be shifted here. So it will be 3 log 3 to the base 1 by 3. And we have read that log a to the base 1 by a is equal to minus 1. So it will be minus 3. And this can be simplified as log 3 to power 2 to the base 1 by 3. This power can be shifted here. So it will be 2 log 3 to the base 1 by 3. And we have read that log a to the base 1 by a is equal to minus 1. So it will be minus 2. Clearly minus 3 is less than minus 2. Point number 2. When the number and the base are on the same side of unity, logarithm is positive. For example, if number and base both are greater than 1 or number and base both lie between 0 to 1. So logarithm will be positive. Second point, when the number and base are on opposite side of unity, logarithm is negative. For example, if number and base, number is greater than 1, base lies between 0 to 1 or the opposite. If number lies between 0 to 1 and base is greater than 1. So logarithm will be negative. Now let us talk about characteristic and mentisa. Logarithm of a number can be divided into two parts. One is integer, another is fraction. Integer part is known as characteristic and fraction part is known as mantisa. Point number one, mantisa is always positive. If the logarithm of a number is 2.34, so it can be written as 2 plus 0.34. This is integer, this is fraction part. So characteristic is 2 and mantisa is 0.34. If the logarithm of a number is negative, for example, minus 3.52, so it can be written as minus 4 plus 0.48. So characteristic is minus 4 and mantisa is 0.48. You may notice here that mantisa is always positive. 
Second point, if the characteristic of log x to the base a be n, then the number of digits in x is n plus 1. We will see one question based on this point. Third point, if the characteristic of log x to the base a be minus n, then there will be n minus 1 zeros between decimal and first significant digit after decimal. We will see this question based on this point. First question, find the number of digits in 36 to power 15. We will take the log of 36 to power 15 to the base 10 to figure out characteristic and mantissa. Log 36 to power 15 to the base 10, 15 can be shifted here. So it will be 15 log. 36 can be written as 2 to power 2 into 3 to power 2. Now this part can be expanded as log m to the base 10 plus log n to the base 10. m is 2 to power 2 and n is 3 to power 2. So it will be 15 log 2 to power 2 base 10 plus log 3 to power 2 base 10. Now this power can be shifted here and this power can be shifted here. So it will be 15 2 log 2 base 10 plus 2 log 3 base 10. 2 is common, can be taken out. So it is 15 into 2 log 2 base 10 plus log 3 base 10. Value of log 2 base 10 is 0 0.3010 and value of log 3 base 10 is 0 0.4771. So it comes out to be 23.343. Characteristic is 23 and Manti size 0.343. So we have figured out n is 23. This n is 23. So number of digits in this number will be n plus 1. That is 23 plus 1, 24. Second question, find the number of zeros between decimal and first significant digit in 1 by 12 to power 100. We will take the log of 1 by 12 to power 100 to the base 10. 100 can be shifted here. So it will be 100 log 1 by 12 to the base 10. This can be expanded as log 1 base 10 minus log 12 base 10. Log 1 on any base is equal to 0. 12 can be written as 2 to power 2 into 3. So this can be expanded as log 2 to power 2 base 10 plus log 3 base 10. Now power 2 can be shifted here. So it will be 2 log 2 base 10 plus log 3 base 10. Value of log 2 base 10 is 0 0.3010. And value of log 3 base 10 is 0 0.4771. So this comes out to be minus 107.91, which can be written as minus 108 plus 0 0.09. So the characteristic is minus 108 and Manti size 0 0.09. So we have figured out n. So n is 108. So number of zeros between decimal and first significant digit after decimal is n minus 1 means 108 minus 1 that is 107. Now let us see a couple of questions based on logarithmic equations. First question solve for x. Log x to the base 2 plus log x to the base 4 plus log x to the base 8 is equal to 11. First step is to make the bases same. 4 can be written as 2 to power 2, 8 can be written as 2 to power 3. So we can shift this power here as reciprocal of power. So it will be log x to the base 2 plus 1 by 2 log x to the base 2 plus 1 by 3 log x to the base 3 is equal to 11. Take log x to the base 2 common in all 3. So it will be log x to the base 2 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 is equal to 11. So it comes out to be log x to the base 2 is equal to 6. Now we can write it in exponent form as x equal to 2 to power 6 or x equal to 64. Second question, solve for x. Log x to the base 2 minus 3 log x to the base 1 by 2 is equal to 6. 1 by 2 can be written as 2 to power minus 1. And now this power can be shifted here as reciprocal of power. So it will be log x base 2 minus 3 into minus 1 log x to the base 2 is equal to 6. Or log x to the base 2 plus 3 log x to the base 2 is equal to 6. And that is equal to 4 log x base 2 is equal to 6. Take 4 to the other side. So log x base 2 is equal to 6 by 4. Or x equal to 2 to power 3 by 2. And 3 by 2 can be split as 1 plus 1 by 2. And this can be split as 2 into 2 to power 1 by 2. That is 2 root 2. Now let us see logarithmic inequalities. There are 4 formulas related to logarithmic inequalities. However, we can solve questions related to logarithmic inequalities by our usual analytical approach. 
Let us see how to do that. First question, solve for x. Log 2x minus 3 to the base 3 is less than 2. First condition is this should be positive. So 2x minus 3 is greater than 0 or x is greater than 3 by 2. For second condition, we need to see whether the base is greater than 1 or it lies between 0 to 1. Condition supplied will be different. In this question, base is greater than 1. So the second condition will be 2x minus 3 is less than 3 to power 2. So this gives x is greater than 6. Combining these two, we can say that x is greater than 6 or x belongs to 6 comma infinity. We can match this result by applying formula also. So this matches with first one and here x is equal to 2x minus 3, a is equal to 3 and p is equal to 2 and a is greater than 1, 3 is greater than 1. So direct solution is x is greater than a to power p. That means 2x minus 3 is greater than 3 to power 2. So you will get the same answer. Second question. Solve for x. Log x plus 1 to the base 1 by 3 is less than 3. Now this should be positive. So this is first condition. x plus 1 is greater than 0 or x is greater than minus 1. Second condition, we need to see whether the base is greater than 1 or it lies between 0 to 1. In this case, base lies between 0 to 1. So the second condition will be x plus 1 is greater than. This sign will be switched. So it is greater than 1 by 3 to power 3. That means x is greater than minus 26 by 27. So combining this and this, we can say that x is greater than minus 26 by 27. We can match this answer by applying formula also. This matches with this and condition is this. So the solution will be x is greater than a to power p. In this condition, x is equal to x plus 1, a is equal to 1 by 3 and p is equal to 3. So you will reach to the same solution. Now let us solve some questions from previous year's JE papers. First question, the value of 3 plus 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 3 plus 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 3 plus and so on up to infinity. These are the options given. This question appeared in J means 2021. You may notice here that after few steps, pattern is repeating precisely from here. So assume that this whole is equal to x. So x is equal to 3 plus 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon. Now from here the pattern is repeating. So we can write x in its place. So it will be x is equal to 3 plus 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon x. Now it is very easy to solve. x is equal to 3 plus 1 upon. Now take x as LCM. So it will be 4x plus 1 here. Now 1 can be written as 1 upon 1. So x is equal to 3 plus. Now 1 will be multiplied with x and this 1 will be multiplied with 4x plus 1. So finally it will be a quadratic in x which can be solved for the values of x. There will be two values of x. x is equal to 1.5 plus root 3 and x equal to 1.5 minus root 3. So the matching value is Option A. Second question, if A plus B plus C is equal to 1, AB plus BC plus CA is equal to 2 and ABC is equal to 3, then the value of A to power 4 plus B to power 4 plus C to power 4 is equal to. This question appeared in J means 2021. This question can be solved using algebraic identities. And the algebraic identity that we are going to use is a plus b plus c whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus c square plus 2 times of ab plus bc plus c. a plus b plus c is given as 1. So 1 square is equal to a square plus b square plus c square plus 2 times of ab plus bc plus c is given as 2. So a square plus b square plus c square is equal to minus 3. This is our first equation. Now square both sides of this equation. 
So a square plus b square plus c square whole square is equal to a to power 4 plus b to power 4 plus c to power 4 plus 2 times of a square b square plus b square c square plus c square a square using the same algebraic identity. a square plus b square plus c square is equal to minus 3. So minus 3 whole square is equal to a to power 4 plus b to power 4 plus c to power 4 plus 2 times of a square b square plus b square c square plus c square a square. Now we have to get the value of this. So we need to figure out the value of this. Now AB plus BC plus CA whole square is equal to A square B square plus B square C square plus C square A square plus 2 times of AB square C plus B C square A plus C A square B using the same algebraic identity once again. AB plus BC plus CA is given as 2. So 2 square is equal to a square b square plus b square c square plus c square a square plus 2 take a b c common in all three terms. So in bracket it comes out to be b plus c plus a. Now 4 is equal to a square b square plus b square c square plus c square a square plus 2 into a b c is given as 3. So it is 3. a plus b plus c is given as 1. It is 1. So a square b square plus b square c square plus c square a square is equal to 4 minus 6 or minus 2. So we have got our third equation. Now put the value of this in second equation. So you will get the value of a to power 4 plus b to power 4 plus c to power 4 and that comes out to be 13. So 13 is our answer. Third question, in a school there are three types of games to be played. Some of the students play two types of games, but none play all the three games. Which Venn diagrams can justify the above statement? These are the Venn diagrams given. These are the options. This question appeared in J Mills 2021. If none of the players play all the three games, that means in any of the Venn diagrams, there should not be an area which is common to all three. In this Venn diagram, this area is common to all three. In this Venn diagram, this area is common to all three. And in this Venn diagram, this area is common to all three. So none of the Venn diagrams justify this statement. So option C, none of these is correct. Fourth question, out of all the patients in a hospital, 89% are found to be suffering from heart ailment and 98% are suffering from lungs infection. If K% percent are suffering from both ailments, then K cannot belong to the set. These are the options given. This question appeared in J Mills 2021. Suppose NH represents number of heart patients. NL represents number of patients with lungs infection. N H union L represents total number of patients. N H intersection L represents patients with both ailments. Then 100 is equal to 89 plus 98 minus K. So K comes out to be 87. Out of these given sets, only this set has all the numbers less than 87. Other sets have numbers 87 or more as well. So this is our answer. Fifth question, let A be a set having elements 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on up to 30 and this be an equivalence relation on A cross A defined by A comma B ordered pair is equivalent to C comma D ordered pair if and only if AD is equal to BC. Then the number of ordered pairs which satisfy this equivalence relation with ordered pair 4 comma 3 is equal to. These are the options given. This question appeared in J Mills 2021. Suppose there are two sets A and A having elements 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on up to 30. So A cross A will have these many ordered pairs. We have to pick those ordered pairs which follow this rule. AD is equal to BC. A is given as 4, B 
B is given as 3. AD is equal to BC means A by B is equal to C by D. A is 4, B is 3. So, A by B is equal to C by D is equal to 4 by 3. What it means is we have to pick those ordered pairs which are in the ratio 4 is to 3 or equivalent ratio. So, first ordered pair will be 4 comma 3. Second, we will get when we multiply both the elements by 2. Third, we will get when we multiply both the elements by 3. Fourth, we will get when we multiply both the elements by 4 and so on till both the elements are less than 30. So, ordered pairs will be 4 comma 3, 8 comma 6, 12 comma 9, 16 comma 12, 20 comma 15, 24 comma 18 and 28 comma 21. So, in total they will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in number. So, option D is correct. Sixth question, the product of the roots of the equation 9x square minus 18 mod x plus 5 is equal to 0 is. These are the options given. This question appeared in J means 2020. In equation 9x square minus 18 mod x plus 5 is equal to 0, the critical point is x is equal to 0. So, we will consider two cases when x is greater than 0 and when x is less than 0. First case when x is greater than 0. So, mod x will be written as x. So, quadratic equation will be 9x square minus 18x plus 5 is equal to 0. It will give two roots as 1 by 3 and 5 by 3. Case 2 when x is less than 0. So, mod x will be written as minus x. So, quadratic equation will be 9x square plus 18x plus 5 is equal to 0. That will give two roots as minus 1 by 3 and minus 5 by 3. Now, the product of all four roots will be 1 by 3 into 5 by 3 into minus 1 by 3 into minus 5 by 3. That gives 25 by 81. So, option B is correct. Seventh question, let S be the set of all real roots of the equation 3 to power x, 3 to power x minus 1 plus 2 is equal to mod 3 to power x minus 1 plus mod 3 to power x minus 2. Then S is an empty set, contains at least 4 elements, contains exactly 2 elements, is a singleton. This question appeared in J means 2020. Assume 3 to power x is equal to t. So, this equation can be written as t into t minus 1 plus 2 is equal to mod t minus 1 plus mod t minus 2. Clearly, the critical points are t is equal to 1 and t is equal to 2. So, we will consider three cases when t is less than 1, when t lies between 1 to 2 and when t is greater than 2. Case 1 when t is less than 1. So, t into t minus 1 plus 2 is equal to both will be negative. So, minus t minus 1 minus t minus 2. So, quadratic will come out to be t square plus t minus 1 is equal to 0 or t is equal to minus 1 plus minus under root 5 by 2. Case 2, when t lies between 1 to 2. So, this will be positive, this will be negative. So, it will be written as t into t minus 1 plus 2 is equal to t minus 1 minus t minus 2. So, quadratic will come out to be t square minus t plus 1 is equal to 0 and roots will be 1 plus minus under root minus 3 upon 2. So, this will not give real roots. So, result will be ignored. Case 3, when t is greater than 2, both of them will be positive. So, the equation will be t into t minus 1 plus 2 is equal to t minus 1 plus t minus 2. So, quadratic will be t square minus 3t plus plus 5 is equal to 0 and roots will be 3 plus minus under root minus 11 upon 2. This will not give real roots. So, result will be ignored. So, finally, there will be two roots. t is equal to minus 1 plus minus under root 5 by 2, two real roots. So, again we will put t as 3 to power x. So, 3 to power x is equal to either minus 1 plus root 5 by 2 or minus 1 minus root 5 by 2. This will give positive and this will give negative root. 
3 to power x will always be positive whether x is positive or negative. For example, if x is 2, so it will be 3 to power 2. If x is minus 2, so it will be 3 to power minus 2 or 1 by 3 to power 2 or 1 by 9. So again it will be positive. So 3 to power x will always be positive. So we can ignore this negative rule. So finally in solution 3 to power x will have only one rule. So, it will have single term. Option D is correct. Eighth question. The number of solutions of the equation log 2x square plus 7x plus 5 to the base x plus 1 plus log x plus 1 whole square to the base 2x plus 5 minus 4 is equal to 0. x is greater than 0 is. This question appeared in J. Mays 2021. This is the given equation. This can be factorized as 2x plus 5 into x plus 1. This power can be brought here. So this can be written as log 2x plus 5 into x plus 1 to the base x plus 1 plus 2 into log x plus 1 to the base 2x plus 5 minus 4 is equal to 0. Log of mn is equal to log m plus log n. And log of a base b can be written as 1 upon log b base a. So this can be written as log 2x plus 5 to the base x plus 1 plus log x plus 1 to the base x plus 1 plus 2 into 1 upon log 2x plus 5 to the base x plus 1 minus 4 is equal to 0. Log a base a is equal to 1. So log x plus 1 to the base x plus 1 is equal to 1. So this can be written as log 2x plus 5 to the base x plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 upon log 2x plus 5 to the base x plus 1 minus 4 is equal to 0. Now assume log 2x plus 5 to the base x plus 1 is equal to t. So this can be written as t plus 1 plus 2 upon t minus 4 is equal to 0. So this gives a quadratic in t, t square minus 3t plus 2 is equal to 0, which can be factorized as t minus 1 into t minus 2 is equal to 0. That means values of t can be 1 or 2. Consider first case when t is equal to 1. Our t is log 2x plus 5 to the base x plus 1. So log 2x plus 5 to the base x plus 1 is equal to 1. On the right hand side, we want to make the same base so that we can compare the numbers. So 1 can be written as log x plus 1 to the base x plus 1. Now, bases are same, so we can compare the numbers. 2x plus 5 is equal to x plus 1 or x is equal to minus 4. This is not acceptable solution as we have to see the solution when x is greater than 0. Consider the second case when t is equal to 2. That means log 2x plus 5 to the base x plus 1 is equal to 2. 2 can be written as 2 into 1. On the right hand side, we want to make the basis same. So we can write as equal to 2 into log x plus 1 to the base x plus 1. Now this multiplied by 2 can be moved as a power to x plus 1. So we can write this as log 2x plus 5 to the base x plus 1 is equal to log x plus 1 whole square to the base x plus 1. Now bases are same, so we can compare the numbers. 2x plus 5 is equal to x plus 1 whole square. This gives two values of x, either 2 or minus 2. Minus value will be rejected as we have to consider only x greater than 0. So there is only one solution, x equal to 2. So find the number of solutions of this equation, only one. So we will fill one here. Ninth question, the sum of the roots of the equation x plus 1 minus 2 log 3 plus 2 to power x to the base 2 plus 2 log 10 minus 2 to power minus x to the base 4 is equal to 0 is. These are the options given. This question appeared in J. Mays 2021. This is the given equation. First we will make the basis same. 4 can be written as 2 to power 2. And we know that log x to the base a to power k is equal to 1 by k log x to the base a. So this power can be moved here as 1 by 2. And this multiplier can be moved as power. So this can be written as 
x plus 1 minus log 3 plus 2 to power x whole square to the base 2 plus log 10 minus 2 to power minus x to the base 2 is equal to 0. Now it is in the form of log m minus log n that is log m upon n. So x plus 1 plus log m is this n is this 10 minus 2 to power minus x upon 3 plus 2 to power x whole square is equal to 0. Take x plus 1 to the other side. So it can be written as log 10 minus 2 to power minus x upon 3 plus 2 to power x whole square to the base 2 is equal to minus times x plus 1. Now this can be written as 2 to power this is equal to this. And 2 to power minus x can be written as 1 upon 2 to power x. So LHS will be 10 minus 1 upon 2 to power x upon 3 plus 2 to power x whole square is equal to RHS will be 2 to power minus x plus 1. Now this can be further simplified as take 2 to power x as LCM in numerator. So it will be 10 into 2 to power x minus 1 upon 2 to power x in the denominator 3 plus 2 to power x whole square is equal to this can be broken as 2 to power minus x into 2 to power minus 1. So it can be simplified further as 10 into 2 to power x minus 1 upon 2 to power x 3 plus 2 to power x whole square is equal to 1 upon 2 to power x into 2. Now assume 2 to power x is equal to t. So this can be written as 10 t minus 1 upon t 3 plus t whole square is equal to 1 upon 2 t. This will give 3 values of t. Either t is equal to 0 or conjugate pairs of roots t square minus 14 t plus 11 is equal to 0. Consider first case when t is equal to 0. That means 2 to power x is equal to 0. This is not possible for any value of x. Consider x is positive like 2, 3, 4. So it will be 2 to power 2, 2 to power 3, etc. So it will be positive. If x is 0, 2 to power 0, that will be 1. If x is negative, it will be like 1 by 2 to power 2, 1 by 2 to power 3, etc. Again, positive value. So 2 to power x is equal to 0 is not possible. So no solution in this case. Case 2, when t square minus 14t plus 11 is equal to 0. This gives two values of t as t is equal to 7 plus root 38 and t is equal to 7 minus root 38. That means 2 to power x is equal to 7 plus minus root 38. Now take log on both sides on base 2. So it will be x log 2 base 2 is equal to log 7 plus root 38 base 2 or x equal to log 7 minus root 38 base 2. Now we have to add two roots. So these two roots are to be added. So it will be log 7 plus root 38 base 2 plus log 7 minus root 38 base 2. Now this is log m plus log n can be written as log mn. This is m, this is n. So it will be multiplied 7 plus root 38 into 7 minus root 38. This is in the form a plus b into a minus b. That will be a square minus b square. So that comes out to be log 11 base 2. So this is our answer. B option is correct. Tenth question, for real x, the number of real roots of the equation 3x square minus 4 mod x square minus 1 plus x minus 1 is equal to 0 is. This question appeared in J Advance 2021. This is the given equation. The critical points will be x equal to plus minus 1. That means x equal to minus 1 and x equal to plus 1. We will consider three cases when x is less than minus 1, when x lies between minus 1 to 1 and when x is greater than 1. Case 1, when x is less than minus 1, x square minus 1 will be positive. So the equation will be 3x square minus 4 x square minus 1 plus x minus 1 is equal to 0. This will give two values of x x equal to 1 plus under root 13 upon 2 and x equal to 1 minus under root 13 upon 2. Case 2, when x lies between minus 1 to plus 1, x square minus 1 will be negative. So equation will be 3x square minus 4 minus x square minus 1 plus x minus 1 is equal to 0. This will give two values of x, 
x equal to minus 1 plus under root 141 upon 14 and x equal to minus 1 minus under root 141 upon 14. Case 3, when x is greater than 1. So, it will be positive. Means x square minus 1 will be positive. So, the equation will be 3x square minus 4 x square minus 1 plus x minus 1 is equal to 0. So, the quadratic will be x square minus x minus 3 is equal to 0 which is same as case 1. So, we will not get any different roots in this case. So, total number of roots will be 2 here and 2 here. So, total number of roots will be 4. Last question, the value of this expression is. This question appeared in J Advance 2018. This expression is made of two parts. This is first part and this is second part. Both are multiplied together. Let us see second part first. That is root 7 to power 1 upon log 7 base 4. Root 7 can be written as 7 to power 1 by 2. So, this will be equal to 7 to power 1 by 2 into 1 upon log 7 base 4. 4 can be written as 2 to power 2. So, this is like log x to the base a to power k which will be equal to 1 by k log x to the base a. So, power 2 will go as multiplier as 1 by 2. So, 1 by 2 log 7 base 2. Now, this 2 will go into numerator. So, it will be 7 to power 1 by 2 into 2 upon log 7 base 2. This 2, 2 gets cancelled out. So, it will be 7 to power 1 upon log 7 base 2. Now, this is 1 upon log a base b, which will be equal to log b base a. So, 7 to power log 2 base 7. Now, this is like x to power log b base x, which will be equal to, now we can swap these numbers. So, it will be equal to 2 log 7 base 7 and log a base a is equal to 1. So, it will be 2 to power 1 that is equal to 2. So, value of second part is equal to 2. Now, let us see first part. Power is this 1 upon log 9 base 2 to the base 2. So, that is equal to 1 upon log a base b is equal to log b base a. So, we can switch the number and base. So, that is equal to log 2 base log 9 base 2. So, this first part is equal to log 9 base 2 to the power 2 into this log 2 to the base log 9 base 2. Now, this power can be shifted here as power of 2. So, it will be log 9 base 2 to the power log 2 to power 2 base log 9 base 2. 2 to power 2 is 4. So, it can be simplified as log 9 base 2 to the power log 4 base log 9 base 2. Again, this is in the form x to power log b base x. So, we can switch these numbers. So, it will be 4 to power log log 9 base 2 to the base log 9 base 2. Now, this is log a base a that is equal to 1. So, that is 4 to power 1 that is 4. So, value of first part is 4 and value of second part is 2. So, value of the expression is 4 into 2 and that is equal to 8. So, answer is 8. In next video, we will start the second chapter that is trigonometric functions. If you have a question, you can ask me on my Discord server. If you have not subscribed my channel yet, please do so.